I said, let's start. We were doing something about uh, something to do with the dissociation cost in K. And we had started talking about buffer solutions, right? So I'll just uh, this thing just a second. I said, we did a we did plenty of questions. So I'll, I'll just go through buffer solutions very, very quickly. I said this one. So buffer solutions, uh, we had buffer solutions. They would, uh, what they would do is that they, that we know that all reactions are very sensitive to pH. Everything is happening in water. H plus one and OH ion concentrations, they, they matter a lot to reactions. Uh, some prefer acidic conditions, some prefer basic conditions. So the pH should not change. They're very sensitive to pH. So you need something to resist a change in pH when a small amount of acid or alkali is added. So uh, your digestive reactions in your stomach, uh, your stomach pH, it should not change. Uh, your reactions are, are going to be affected in your stomach. So they should not change at all cost. Uh, even if you consume anything uh, acidic or alkaline, the pH should not change. So you've got uh, buffer solutions. What's, what's a buffer solution? It's a mixture of a weak acid plus its conjugate base. Uh, the purpose of the weak acid is that it produces H plus 1 ions when needed and the conjugate base purpose is that it accepts H plus 1 when, when that's needed. So, so for example, you have a solution that has ethanoic acid, uh, this one, and you have the same solution contains ethanoate ions. So both ethanoic acid, the weak acid and its conjugate base both must be present. Uh, and, and the reason they should be present is because if you try to increase H plus 1 ions, the H plus 1 ions are going to be absorbed by the ethanoate ions. The ethanoate ions are going to capture the H plus 1 ions and they would accept it, accept them because this is a base and the base would accept H plus 1 ions and the H plus 1 ions are going to get neutralized. If you try to add more OH ions, what would happen is that the acid would start releasing H plus 1 ions. So this acid over here would release an H plus 1 ions and that H plus 1 ion would be absorbed by OH ion to form water. So the OH ion would also be neutralized. So, so the weak acid, what it does is that it produces H plus 1 ions when they are needed. Like if you add OH ions and this thing, it accepts H plus 1 ions when that's required. So they don't allow the solution to become more acidic or more basic. So that is what a buffer is. So we did all sorts of buffers. Uh, this is a weak acid. That's your conjugate base. So if the solution contains NH4 plus 1 ions and at the same time, it also contains uh, NH3 as well, uh, then it's going to act as a, uh, as a, as a buffer. The NH3 will accept H plus 1 ions if they are added. The NH4 plus 1 ions would neutralize OH ions. I mean, they're going to start releasing uh, H plus 1 ions to neutralize the OH ions. They would turn into water. And if you add H plus 1 ions in the solution, then those H plus 1 ions would be grabbed by the NH3, which is the conjugate base, and that would turn into NH4 plus 1 back again. Anyway, so this is all that's happening in buffer solutions. And uh, I told you that buffer solutions, they have the same exact acid dissociation constant because it's an equilibrium that would exist between a weak acid and its conjugate base. So it's exactly the same acid dissociation constant, the same equilibrium constant. The only difference is that this and this are not going to have the same concentration because you're going to add more of this in the solution. So the conjugate base is added. So it's basically Ka. Previously, we what we did was we said that, uh, I mean, previously, where did it go? Uh, previously, we said that these two ions would have the same concentration, but now they're not going to have the same concentration because uh, NS3 is added from outside. Uh, so when it's added from outside, the concentration of NS3 increases. So, which is why the conjugate base concentration has to be put into the formula. You just can't write H plus 1 squared. That's that's the only difference. And we did questions on that. We did questions. Uh, if you have a buffer and you have ethroic acid and you have uh, the conjugate base as well, always the conjugate base is usually present in the form of a salt. Uh, ignore sodium ions. Think of them as invisible. They're spectator ions. They're not doing anything. It's uh, So, you have the two concentrations. The K is given. 
So you'll, you'll just plug in the values. It's going to be, you have the ethanoic acid concentration, you have the ethanoic ion concentration as well. K would be products over reactants. It's, it's going to be conjugate base concentration into H plus 1 divided by the acid concentration. Uh, you can calculate H plus 1 because these three values are already given in the question. So we were doing these questions. Uh, this was another buffer. Uh, you, you had NH4 plus 1 ions and you had NH3. So both weak acid and the conjugate base both were present. NH4 plus 1 and NH3 both were present. Uh, the concentrations were also known. So K was NH3 concentration into H plus 1 divided by NH4 plus 1. And we were able to figure out the concentration of H plus 1 ions. Uh, similarly, uh, I told you it, how to identify, uh, always think of Na as invisible. If you have a mixture of NaHSO4 and Na2SO4, then the HSO4 ions are uh, acting as the weak acid and they're in equilibrium with SO4 minus 2 ions, which are coming from this salt, with this salt over here. Now we did different types of questions and we started doing questions which, were, which had moles in them. And so, for example, we did this question over here where the buffer was not made directly. It actually was the result of a reaction. So this was a slightly more complicated question where they were saying that uh, they had NH3, which was mixed with HCl. So NH3, when, it mixed, when it's mixed with HCl, it produces NH4Cl. So we figured out the moles of uh, NST that were being added. Uh, we figured out that there were 0 0.01 moles of NST that were being added. The moles of HCl, we figured out that there were 0 0.006 moles of HCl that were reacting. So 0 0.006 reacted with 0 0.006. That means there were 0 0.004 moles of NST that were still left because you added more of it. Uh, the amount of NST that was added was in excess. So there was some leftover, 0 0.006 moles would react with only 0 0.006. So that means uh, only 0 0.006 would react, so 0 0.004 moles would still be left in the solution. And 0 0.006 reacts with 0 0.006 to form 0 0.006 moles of NH4Cl. Uh, but anyways, you're at the end point, you'll have NH4 plus 1 ions in your solution, and you'll also have the leftover NH3 as well. So. So the buffer was the result of uh, of a reaction. That at the end of the day, the solution contained NH4 plus one, but at, at the same time, it also contained the leftover NH3 as well. So we had the moles of both. So we just plugged in the values in the K expression and we figured out the pH. Now, anyways, uh, what we were, uh, and I'm gonna do just one more question similar to this where we're going to try and find the pH of these solutions. So let's, so let's try and do another question. Let's practice more questions. So I've got, uh, I've got, uh, uh, which acid, let me think of an acid. Uh, so I've got, I've got uh, butanoic acid, which is C3H7COOH, and that's reacting with NH. I mean, these two are mixed together. And they're saying that uh, there is 100 cm cube of 0 0.1 mole per dm cube of this thing. And this is mixed, mixed with any which that is 40 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube. So the two are mixed. So the two are mixed together. We know that the two would react to form a salt, which is CH3H7CO minus one. That's the conjugate base and plus water molecules. Uh, can anyone quickly tell me what moles do we have over here for for uh, butanoic acid? Uh, Ten. Yeah, but it's going to be divided with us. Zero point zero one. Okay, so yeah. it's going to be zero point zero one moles. And NaOH would be zero point uh, I think double zero four moles. Zero zero four. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now one of them is in excess. I mean, they reacted one ratio one, so point double zero four moles would completely react. 
So this is going to completely react. It's going to get used up. There would be no anyways left. Uh, and point double zero four would react with just point double zero four. So out of the point zero one, zero point zero zero four moles react. So there would be point double zero six moles left unreacted. So your equilibrium is going to contain this thing. It's going to contain uh, this leftover. I mean, the butanoic, the butanoic acid would not completely react. There would be some left at the end. And 0 0.004 would react with 0 0.004 to produce 0 0.004 moles of uh, this conjugate base. Sir, the moles of butanoic acid are 0 0.01. No, they are 0 0.01. How much are taking part of the reaction? Achha, okay, yeah, I was looking this up. Okay. So 0 0.004 reacts, but only 0 0.004 of this would react. I mean, it's 1 ratio 1. So that means 0 0.01 moles cannot react. Those may 0 0.004 have reacted. And you'll be left with 0 0.006 moles. If you try to subtract the two. Achha, so now it's a buffer. Now your solution contains the leftover ethanoic acid. Sorry, not ethanoic acid, uh, whatever it, uh, it's butanoic acid. So there is leftover butanoic acid plus the conjugate base is also present. C387C00-1 is, is present as well. Both of them are present in the buffer and the two ions which are, I mean, these two things are left at the end of the reaction, like the first reaction is over now. So the two things are left at the end of the reaction. So uh, they'll form a buffer and you have, uh, I mean, this is 0 0.006 moles. And this is 0 0.004 moles. And let's assume that the K value is given. It's given as uh, 1.5 times 10 power minus 7. So it's going to be product concentration, which is conjugate base concentration, 0 0.004 into the H plus one concentration. And the whole thing will be divided by the, by the concentration of butanoic acid, which is 0 0.006. Uh, can anyone quickly tell me what the pH is? I'm getting 6.65. So you just find the concentration of H plus 1 and uh, take the negative log of that and you will find pH. Now we're going to move towards a slightly even more difficult question, which is, which, I mean, this question came in your exam and uh, very few people were able to actually solve this question. So this one is slightly more difficult. So this over here. is a tricky question. Now the question was that you had a beaker and that beaker, I mean, somebody was trying to make a buffer. To make a buffer, you add two things. You add, uh, uh, I mean, you need ethanoic acid. I mean, let's say he's making a buffer out of ethanoic acid and you also need the salt of ethanoic acid or the conjugate base. Okay, so you need both of these ions. So what he did was he added the two things. He added ethanoic acid So this ethanoic acid had a concentration of uh, 0.1 uh, mole per dm cube. And the volume was volume was kind of unknown. No one really knew what the volume was. And you had uh, the conjugate base added as well in the form of a salt. Like CHTCO minus one and a plus one was added. Its concentration was known. It was uh, 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. And the volume was unknown. I guess we had no idea what the volume was. Uh, what you did know was you knew the K value of uh, ethanoic acid and that value was 1.8 times uh, 10 power minus 6 let's say 
So we had some idea of what the what the K value was. And what was also known was that the volume, the total volume of the solution that's in this beaker, that should be the buffer solution volume should be 100 cm cube. And we, and the pH of this buffer sh solution should be 5.1. And they're asking us what is, so the whole question is what is the volume of uh, the salt that needs to be added, the conjugate base that needs to be added, and what's the volume of the ethanoic acid that should be added to make a 100 cm cube buffer. <coughs> I mean, that's the, that's the whole question. So what volumes need to be mixed up? Now, before answering this question, uh, remember this is the concentration of sodium ethanoate before you added it. Okay, so that's your original concentration. I mean, there might be a beaker, a tiny beaker. There might be some, uh, I mean, there's, there's a, another tiny beaker over here. So these, as a both, so, the, so you've got you've got two two beakers now, and uh, so that's your concentration of sodium ethanoate before it's been added to this, and that's the concentration of ethanoic acid before it's been added. Can anyone guess what would happen to the concentration once the two solutions are mixed up? Would it be the same? Would it dilute? Would it become more concentrated? What would happen? to the concentration of sodium ethanoate, 0.2 mole per dm cube, if you mix it with ethanoic acid, I mean, if you mix the two beakers, what, what's going to happen to the concentration of the combined solution, combined mixture? Any idea, any guesses? Could it be anyone, Bazga? I mean, no change to it because it would be the same on both of the sides. Even if you mix it, they will react and this and it can go I mean, with they're, that. I said, they're, they're not going to react. I mean, uh, this is ethanoic acid, this is sodium ethanoate. There is no reaction between them, TK. Yeah. So they, I mean, the particles, the number of moles would remain the same. I mean, it's not going to change because they're not, there's not going to be any reaction. Except that, remember this, TK, always remember this. Whenever you mix two solutions, When two solutions get mixed, both of them, they get diluted. Then both get diluted. Assuming that there is no reaction, like I'm just mixing the two solutions, nothing is happening, right? Uh, why does this happen? The reason it happens is because your moles stay the same. So imagine that I have, uh, I have, I've added X, right? And X has a total of five particles, right? And in that solution, I'm adding another solution and that is Y. When I add that solution, there would be no change in the moles of X. The number of particles, they're five particles, so they would remain five particles. Uh, because the, the two are not reacting. So you still have five particles, right? So the moles remain the same. But what happens is when you mix two solutions, uh, the volume changes. The volume, it increases. So now your particles of X are kind of more f uh, are further away from each other. And since uh, they are further away, just one second, let me, as I say, your particles of Y, are now further away and your particles would get diluted. Is this point clear? Yes, sir. So, is this clear to yes, everyone? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I said, so, so remember this, uh, why, why the, does this happen? Because your moles are the same. Con what is concentration? Concentration is the number of moles or the number of particles per unit volume, right? So whenever uh, you mix two solutions, the moles are still the same. I mean, that's constant. But the other solution contains water as well. So you're basically in a way kind of adding water to it and the volume 
increases. So the number of moles per unit volume, it kind of becomes, the particles become further away from each other and they become more dilute. And the same would happen over here. Like you're mixing these two solutions, the exact same thing would repeat over here. Whenever you mix two solutions, uh, the, the new concentration in this beaker, uh, the, the concentration of this uh, conjugate base is going to be lesser. And the concentration of this uh, weak acid is also going to be lesser as well. Is this clear? Yes. I said, now, I want to figure out the volume, right? So let's move on to the volume part. Uh, what's the total volume? That's 100 cm cube, right? What that means is that I might be adding 20 cm cube of this and I might be adding 80 cm cube of this. Or I might be adding 60 cm cube of this and I might be adding uh, 40 cm cube of this. The total volume of this of the buffer should be 100 cm cube. So we don't know what the volume is. So I'm going to take the volume as uh, as x. So the volume is being taken as x cm cube for ethanoic acid. So I'm adding x cm cube of ethanoic acid to this. So what is the volume of uh, sodium ethanoate in terms of x? 100 minus x. Okay, so that's going to be 100 minus x. So the remaining volume out of 100, that's, uh, so this would be 100 minus x cm cube. Okay, is this clear? Uh, the two volumes must add up to be equal to 100. So if, if, this, if x is 20, this would be 80. If x is 30, this would be 70. If x is 90, this would be 10. But the two volumes must add up to be 100. Is this step clear? Yes. yes. I said, now, I know that uh, it is a buffer solution. I know for a buffer solution, you have K and the K is given. It's the concentration of ethanoic acid, not ethanoic acid, uh, products over reactants going to be the concentration of the uh, conjugate base into the concentration of H plus one. And we're going to divide the whole thing by the concentration of the weak acid. Now, all the things are provided. Uh, from pH, you can actually figure out the H plus one concentration. The K value is already given over here. That's already provided. The only thing that's missing is the concentration of ethanoic acid and the concentration of the ethanoate ions. Remember, this concentration will not work. This is not the, con I mean, because the two solutions are mixing up. So the concentration of ethanoic ions and ethanoic acid needs to be for, uh, figured out. So the first thing is I'm going to try and figure out the moles. How many moles of uh, sodium ethanoate do we have? How do you find moles? Moles is concentration times volume, that's moles. So it's 0 0.2 multiplied by 100 minus x. And the volume must be in dm cube. So that's going to be divided by 1000. Is this point clear? Yes. Yes. Yes, so it's, so it's, uh, it's concentration times volume, that's moles. So this is the amount of moles that I'm putting in this solution of sodium, uh, of ethanoic ions. And I can find the moles of this as well. How much ethanoic acid am I putting in? So that is a uh, concentration, which is 0 0.1 multiplied by the volume, which is X. And the X should be in dm cube. So I'm going to divide that by 1000. So I found the moles, right? Now I need to find the concentration. What's the formula of concentration? Concentration is moles divided by volume. I mean, that is what concentration is. So I'm just going to write it over here. Concentration is going to be moles divided by the, divided by the volume. We already have the moles. Now the solution, when they've mixed up, they have a new volume, which is 100 cm cube. So the moles that I, that I found out, which were put into this container, they are now present in 100 cm cube solution. So I have a new volume, which is 100 cm cube. 100 cm cube means that uh, moles divided by volume, which is 100 cm cube. It should be in dm cube. So I'm going to divide that by 1000 as well. Is this clear? Yes, sir. 
ठीक है सो आई आई फिगर आउट हाउ मच हाउ मेनी मोल्स आई एम पुटिंग इन इन टू दिस कंटेनर एंड दोज मोल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन हंड्रेड सीम क्यूब सोल्यूशन सो दैट दोज मोल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन वन हंड्रेड सीम क्यूब सोल्यूशन सो मोल्स पर वॉल्यूम दैट्स दैट्स कॉन्सेंट्रेशन क्लियर इज दिस क्लियर ईथन मोहम्मद इज दिस क्लियर जोहा इब्रार इज दिस क्लियर मिनाहिल Yes. Yeah. So now the other part. I so said the other part. So I'm going to turn this into concentration as well. Uh, for ethylic acid, I'm adding these many moles. So the moles need to be divided by the volume. These moles are now present in a hundred cm cube solution. So I'm going to divide that by the volume, which is hundred cm cube, but it should be in dm cube. So I have the concentration of both things now: ethylic acid and sodium ethanoate as well so pretty much i have everything the only thing i need to figure out now is the value of x now one thing is that the concentration of ethanoate ions which is this one is being divided by the concentration of ethanoic acid in the expression so if i divide the two things up a lot of things would get cancelled automatically like this will get cancelled out if i do division i mean i'm i'm doing this division over here over here i'm dividing this by this so if i start dividing them uh, the 1000 would also get cancelled out right so at the end of the day in your k expression i mean the value of k is given over here that's 1.8 times 10 power minus 6 so i'm plugging in the values uh ethanoate ion concentration divided by ethanoic acid this divided by this the only thing that's left is this is uh 0.2 into 100 minus x and the other one is uh 0.1x everything else in the division process gets cancelled out into h plus 1 concentration the ph is given that's 5.1 so that means the h plus 1 concentration is 10 to the power minus 5.1 is this clear yeah yes so that is 10 to the power minus 5. One, and uh, uh, you just have to solve this now. So I'm just going to I'm I'm just going to I mean this was a very difficult question which pretty much no one was able to do. So I'm just going to repeat the whole. I mean this is you just solve this expression and you'll you'll find x. But before we do that, I'll just uh, recap everything. Uh, that they wanted to make a buffer of 100 cm cube volume and the pH had to be 5.1. They gave us ethanoic acid. 0.1 mole per dm cube, and they gave us uh, its conjugate base, sodium ethanoate, which was 0.2 mole per dm cube, and they told us to figure out the volume. I took the volume of this as x. The volume of the other substance was going to come out to be 100 minus x. I found out the moles, which was concentration times volume. So we had the moles of so uh, of conjugate base that were being added, and I found the moles of this ethanoic acid volume. Into concentration, and I found out the moles of ethanoic acid in this beaker over here in terms of x. Now I wanted to find the concentration of both things, so I divided them by the new volume, which is after mixing the new volume was 100 cm cube. So I divided the whole thing by 0.1 dm cube or 100 cm cube in terms of dm cube, and divided this by this as well. I had my k expression. I had to plug in the concentrations of ethanoic ions and ethanoic acid, which I found out over here. and since they were being divided half of the things they got cancelled out and you were just left with this expression so can anyone try and solve what the answer is and what is the value of x uh, i got 90 but i'm not sure if it's correct exactly 90 no it's like 89.8 So let's take it as eighty nine point eight, and that is probably correct because it's really difficult to actually get something between zero and hundred. So I think that's probably correct because uh, any any value of x that's not between zero and hundred, that's probably going to be wrong. So I mean you can double check, but uh, that will give you the value of. X uh, value of X means that there is eighty nine point eight cm cube of ethanoic acid that's being added, and the conjugate base that's being added is around eleven point two or ten point two. Okay, is this question clear? 
Yes, sir. Yes. ठीक है सो शफा ग्रुबाब इज दिस क्लेयर नबीला यस सो अच्छा सो this one this one was a difficult question so i'm just going to recap all the types of questions that we did for buffer solutions from the start again um sir yes which year did the this this question come up probably i think i have just one second uh let me Just Google this. Construct a buffer. I'm sure. What's the value for x? That's it. This is. Guys, it's time. Guys, also getting the same answer. The same answer. Okay, just a second. I'm just trying to sort out. Nine seven zero one. One second. Just a second, is not. I said this one. Okay, I have it. I found the video. Okay, this one. It's uh, it's some thirteen QB four two. I mean, that's that's the exact. I mean, can you see the screen? Yes. I mean, that's that's the exact question. Okay. So thank you. So just one second. In that they had PH five point five, they gave everything, and you suppose no one was able, actually able to. This is the, this is the, uh, summer thirty, so no one was able to actually answer this question when it came. I said now, moving back to this, uh, so I'll just I'll just quickly recap uh, the types of buffer solution questions. A lot of them are going to be very straightforward. That they'll give you the concentration of uh, the weak acid. They'll give you the concentration of the of the uh, conjugate base. They'll give you the value of K. You just have to plug in the values. That's I mean, so very straightforward questions. Conjugate base concentration, base concent uh, sorry, uh, conjugate base concentration, weak acid concentration, K value given. Just plug in the values. You'll find the answer. Then they'll mix it up with moles questions. TK where you have to actually struggle to find the values of uh in in this the only thing is you have to struggle and find the value of the base concentration at the end and the weak acid that's left at the end and then we had uh, this question where we had to this one the last one where we had to figure the volume there were some other tricky questions as well and i told you that remember this as well that whenever you have equal concentrations of ethanoic acid and the conjugate base in the expression the conjugate base and acid they cancel out and the k becomes equal to h plus 1 and that's how in the lab as well that's how you find the value of k you you just take a ph meter you you add e you add equal concentrations of ethanoic acid and uh, the sodium ethanoate the salt as well whatever the ph of the solution that's your k as well i mean you can you can turn that into k okay so we did all types of questions we're going to follow this up with the uh, there's some i mean on the same topic on buffers and weak acids you now have to draw ph curves okay which we'll which we will discuss in the next class mike is he going just a second uh, sir, i have a question i mean how did you calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions in the previous question Which one? I mean, it was in the last question. Over here, yeah. I mean, the pH was given. the pH was given. Hmm. So pH. pH divided by negative log of what? I mean. The P. What is pH? pH is negative log of concentration. It's a negative log of the concentration of H plus one, right? Yeah. And that value was given as five point one. This kind of method, but you what you have to do is you have to take the anti-log. 
So just remember anti log would be 10 to the power minus 5.1. I mean, you take the you take the minus sign there first, so minus 5.1 ho jata hai. And anti log is 10 power x. So so whenever you have pH, the H person concentration is 10 to the power minus 5.1. If the pH was 4.8, then the H person concentration would be 10 to the power minus 4.8. Okay, is this clear? Yes. And so from there that we got this, okay? So let's uh, let's continue. Uh, this part is over. Buffer solutions is over. Now uh, the next part is, which is related to this one, that is uh, sketching the pH curves, and they can be tricky as well. So we're going to discuss those tomorrow then. Okay. No, sir. Okay. So Thank you. Thank you. Love this. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Love is.